So for today's lesson, we're going back to confidence intervals that we did in chapter seven, but this time we're going to do confidence intervals for standard deviation and variance, uh, mostly standard deviation. If you recall, we had those steps of confidence intervals. We are going to basically use those same steps, except we are omitting the step for finding the margin of error. In the examples we did earlier, every of all the distributions were bell shaped. That is, they were symmetric. But the distribution that applies to standard deviation variance is not symmetric, so there is no margin of error. Um, so we're going to skip that step and those calculations. It means that our formula for the confidence interval, which if you recall last time was just point estimate plus or minus margin of error, is now going to be a little bit more in depth. So you give some, you get some. The formula for confidence interval of standard deviation, since it is standard deviation, we shouldn't be any surprised to see a square root. is this so again not quite as easy just adding and subtracting a margin of error but we don't have a margin of error um, the n minus one is still equivalent to the degrees of freedom which we're going to have with this chi-square distribution s stands for the sample standard deviation sigma is the population standard deviation that we're trying to estimate and because it's not symmetric we have to use chi-square r and chi-square l standing for left and right um, before, if the right critical value was 2, the left one was negative 2, but since it's not symmetric, that doesn't work anymore. Um, for these chi-square, and by the way, the square, you do not need to square anything. These squares here, the numbers will already come squared for you, so to speak, and the general notation I'll use is chi-square C, just like we used TC and ZC before. But our new Excel command is chi-square.m. And we used M commands back in Chapter 7 before, so again, no big surprise. And the chi-square stands for chi-square. Um, we will still input the probability to the left. Then n minus 1 is our degrees of freedom, just like we did with t.m. So let's check out this example. Notice we are back to confidence intervals. It flat out says confidence interval. It's asking you to circle a confidence interval as your final answer. So we're going to go through those six steps. So what parameter are we trying to estimate? And we're looking for a confidence interval for the standard deviation. So the answer is sigma. And then step two, identify any of the statistics needed. Well, as you look up at this formula up here for the confidence interval, we can see that we're going to need to know S and we're going to need to know N. The chi-squares are critical values, but those are the only two statistics that we need. Um, they told us that the mean is 380 grams. Um, that's just superfluous information. We don't need that. We need to know the standard deviation, which is 5 grams, and N, the number sampled, was 20 boxes. Step 3 was to find our critical value. Now, our picture, again, is not bell-shaped. It is this right-skewed graph. Zero is actually over here on the far left. You cannot get a negative critical value in the chi-square distribution. Um, since it is confidence intervals, it is two-tailed. I know the left side doesn't look like a tail, but it still is considered two-tailed. And we'll label this one chi-square L and this one chi-square R. And again, we don't have the margin of error, but we're going to have to do extra work to find these district, these critical values. Um, we have are doing an 80% confidence interval, so we have 0.8 in the middle, and we'll have 0.1 in each of the tails. So 
So for the L, the probability to the left is 0 0.1, comma, degrees of freedom is 19. And I'll go to Excel in a minute and calculate that. I'm going to go ahead and write out the R1. For the R, there is 0.9 to the left and still 19 degrees of freedom. So let's go to Excel, which was supposed to be open already, sorry. So we have 11.65 and 27.20. Now step four was the margin of error, but again, we are skipping step four. Now I'm gonna keep my numbering consistent. So I'm just gonna not do step four and call this step five. Let's calculate our confidence interval. And we need that formula up there. So we have the square root of n minus 1 is 19 times the standard deviation, which is 5 squared, divided by, now there is one thing to be careful about. I think you would figure it out at the end, but just in case, notice that the R, which stands for right, is on the left side of the confidence interval. And the L, which stands for left, is on the right side of the confidence interval. That is not a mistake. That is done on purpose. If you did screw things up, you would end up with an answer that looked like this. And you would hopefully know that there's no number that's greater than five and less than three. So that's why I say I think you would catch yourself if you tried to get those backwards, but it is very easy to do. And as we did back in unit three, when we go to make these calculations, we should cell reference. So, oops, confidence interval. So we have square root of 19 times five squared divided by, and on the left side, it was 27. On the right side, another square root of 19 times 5 squared divided by the 11. So we get 4.18 and 6.39. Like means, you should ask yourself, what are the units? S, the standard deviation was measured in grams, so sigma should be measured in grams. And then, of course, we end with our interpretation, and this is very much like what we did before. This part should seem okay. Now the next word before was either mean or proportion. In this case, it's going to be standard deviation. Of, and like mean, we need to talk about what we were measuring. This was the mass of cereal.
Then the all statement in all boxes. And then the finishing phrase, just like before. is between 4.18 grams and 6.39 grams. Don't plan on working an example of variance, but it's exactly the same. All you do is ditch the big square root in the formula. As always, if you have any questions, please ask your instructor.